Hey everyone, and welcome to this session on gaining insight into your connected engineering data. Now, I just have a couple of slides to set the scene, and then I'll be delivering the rest of this session as a live demonstration. My name is Andy Lapping. I'm a consultant, author, trainer, and developer, and I have over 20 years experience in model-based systems and software engineering. And in case you're wondering, yes, those are all pictures of me. And no, that's not my real Chester. This is a pretty accurate picture of today's engineering environment. There are hundreds of tools in use, each with their own UI and workflow and process and database or file system backend. But we have to be able to connect all of the artifacts produced by those tools together for a robust engineering environment. Now, traditionally, that was done in a number of ways. One method used was bespoke point-to-point -point tool integrations. And those things were very brittle and prone to breaking as soon as one of the tools changed versions. And I've certainly written a couple of those integrations myself in the past. Another approach was to have one tool try and own all of the data. And that was an approach that really simply didn't scale. Another approach was to try and maintain traceability manually in external files like spreadsheets. And again, that was a very manual process, time consuming and prone to error. Now, this problem was solved around about 10 years ago now with the advent of OSLC or Open Services for Lifecycle Collaboration. Now, that's a set of open standards that advocate just enough traceability. So the artifacts are authored and maintained and kept in the original tool, but delegated UIs allow us to connect those engineering artifacts to other engineering artifacts in a standard way. Now, IBM's Engineering Lifecycle Management Platform, or ELM, has a set of integrated capabilities like requirements management, task management, architecture management, workflow management, and so on. And that's all built on OSLC, so we can connect our engineering artifacts together, regardless of which tool they're in, even if they're outside the ELM platform. Now, that's all well and good, but how do we actually consume that traceability? How do we gain value from it? Another part of the platform is called LQE, or the Lifecycle Query Index. Again, this is based on an open specification called TRS, or Tracked Resource Set. And that basically describes how a tool can expose its data so that it can be indexed. Now, LQE then builds up an index of all of our connected engineering data. Sat on top of LQE are two other capabilities. Jazz Reporting Services Report Builder is all about self-serve reporting for things like dashboards. The other capability, which we're going to dive a little bit deeper in today, is called Engineering Insights. And that's all about visualizing, analyzing, and searching across all of that connected engineering data. Well, that's enough slide work. Let's go take a look at it. And we're going to start with change impact analysis. Before we get to that, let's first take a peek behind the curtain and see where the OSRC tracked resource set specification is being used inside the IBM Jazz core platform. Now, as I mentioned earlier, that platform has a component called the Lifecycle Query Engine, or LQE. LQE collects data from TRS providers using the OSRC TRS specification, and then builds and maintains a central index of that data. Now, that index is an RDF data store, same as OSRC's data representation. The RDF triples in that data store essentially then form a graph of all of the lifecycle artifacts and their relationships. Here we are in the administration interface of LQE. The first thing you'll see is that we have a list of data sources, all of the tools that are providing a feed of data according to that tracked resource set specification. Some of those tools are sat directly on the JAS platform, such as IBM's Doors Next, but others are not. For example, at the bottom of the list, we have Atlassian's Jira tool, where we might be, for example, tracking defects and stories and so on, and then tracing those to maybe the requirements in Doors Next. Let's examine one of those data sources and say we'll click on that Jira data source. 
you can see that the authentication between LQE and JIRA is through OAuth or Open Authorization, the open standard for access delegation. Now you could also use things like HTTP basic authentication here. In the settings section, you can see the type of OSRC artifacts that are in this particular feed. In this case, change management artifacts. Now here we can also configure some aspects of that feed, such as how often LQE polls that data source for updates. And that's not strictly real time, it's typically every one to three minutes. Although we can force an update if we want to immediately see any change data. Now, one important aspect of gathering and analyzing data through TRS is access control. The LQE index contains information about the artifacts from the TRS provider. Now, not necessarily all of the artifacts information, only the data the TRS provider has chosen to expose to the TRS feed. But that data is stored in the index, and it's therefore available even if the TRS provider goes down. So who is allowed to view the data in that index? In a few minutes, you'll see some graphical views of linked lifecycle artifacts. And those views are built from the data that's in the index. So those views are again available, even if the TRS provider isn't. Now, of course, we could grant or deny access for specific individuals or groups to the entire TRS provider's feed. But for fine-grained access control to artifacts, the TRS provider can specify an access context list as part of the feed, making sure that only those users who are authorized to see specific artifacts actually have access to them. Now, those kinds of permissions can also be set manually here in LQE, which is useful if a TRS provider doesn't provide an access context list. We can control access here. So we've seen a little bit of the engine. Let's now drive the car. Just to give you some context to what you're about to see, this is the product breakdown structure for our demo project. It's a drone project codenamed the Aviary, which is a system of systems. At the Aviary level, we have requirements, we have designs, we have tests and so on. That system is then broken down into three smaller systems. The drone itself, which is called the Hummingbird, a controller called the Bird Feeder, and a number of viewing devices called bird watchers. If we expand the Hummingbird, we can see that we have requirements, designs, and tests for that system. And it's further broken down into subsystems for avionics, comms, and so on. And those subsystems also have requirements, models, tests, and at some point, even source code. And all of that work will be managed, planned, and tracked through work items, and of course, all of those artifacts will be connected by OSLC links. So how do we go about analyzing the impact of a change to that system? Here in the work item management part of the platform, we have a change request to extend the operating range of the drone. On the links tab, we can see that we have other artifacts across the life cycle that have been connected to this work item using OSLC. For example, we can see it has an effects requirement link to a requirement in the requirement management part of the platform. Rich Hover shows us that that requirement is a stakeholder requirement in that top level part of our system, the aviary. And we can also see that that stakeholder requirement is satisfied by two system requirements further downstream. As you saw in the product breakdown structure, that's the top of a potentially very deep pyramid with requirements, designs, test artifacts, and so on at many different levels. Now we can of course follow these links into requirements management downstream between modules perhaps, and even into the other areas like designs. But instead let's open up this view in engineering insights or ENI. ENI gives us a holistic view across all of our engineering data allowing complex and time-consuming tasks like impact analysis to be performed in minutes instead of weeks. This view, for example, starts at the change request we looked at in the workflow management part of the platform. 
Here is the effects requirement link we saw while we were there. And here is the stakeholder requirement at the end of that link, and then the system requirements that satisfy it. Now in yellow are all of the other requirements in that chain, along with test cases in green and also architecture elements are in other colors. And this is not just a static picture. This view is dynamically generated from the data in that index that LQE creates. I can use Rich Hover on any of these artifacts. I can use the view for navigation, jumping into the right place in the right tool for any artifact in the view. Now, of course, if any new artifacts or any new traceability are added in those domain tools, then this view will automatically update. And being OSLC, it's not limited to the ELM platform. Any tool that supports OSLC and TRS can be visualized here. You have links to physical elements in a bill of materials in a PLM system. They can appear in this view. Devices on an IoT platform, documents in a document management system. As long as it can be indexed by LQE, then we can visualize that data. Views can also be dynamic and offer levels of abstraction on the engineering data. For example, this view is one I built out to help with an ASPICE assessment, but it's equally useful outside of that. On the left are all of the requirement modules or documents that exist in this particular project. Now, those are actually color coded based on their readiness. Now, what do I mean by that? Let's click one of them. That populates the central panel here with all of the requirement artifacts that are in that module. Those requirements are color coded based on the test cases that have validated by OSRC links to them and by the most recent test execution result of those test cases. Now, only when all of the requirements turn green, does a module turn green. Green requirements are those where the most recent result of a linked test case has passed. Blue means that there is no linked test case at all. And red means that there is a linked test case, but the most recent execution failed. For this module, we can see there are a lot of missing test cases. And for those that are there, most of them haven't been executed yet. If we click a different module, the view dynamically updates and we can see the details for that module. Now that one's in better shape in that there are only three missing test cases, but there are also more execution failures as well. Selecting a requirement populates that in the view, showing not only the most recent linked test case execution result, but the previous execution runs of that test case as well. This view is analyzing the presence or absence of OSLC links down the V-Life cycle on the left and across the V-Life cycle on the right. For example, there are 49 stakeholder requirements for the aviary. 11 of those have satisfaction links to the aviary system requirements and 38 don't. For the aviary system requirements, 15 have links to downstream hummingbird system requirements and 16 don't. On the right, for the hummingbird system requirements, 13 of those are validated by test cases and 26 are not, and so on. This view is also dynamic. Clicking on one of the numbered boxes opens a detailed view of those requirements. And from there, we could navigate off to the right tool and again, the right artifact in that tool. This view is looking at things from the perspective of a test engineer. And again, it's dynamic. Selecting a test plan on the left populates all of the test cases in that plan on the right, along with the requirements that they validate and the linked test execution results. Now to show you just how quickly and easily these views can be built, let's create a new one from scratch. Over here on the right, we have a palette, which is populated automatically from the data that's in the LQE index. Now, that means if you've created custom work item types or custom attributes for requirements, for example, then they automatically appear here. We're going to create a traceability view using the out of the box data that ships with the product. 
So you can try this sample on your own if you want to. Now that data is called JKE banking or money that matters. And it's an IT sample, but that's kind of irrelevant as they still have requirements, and work items and test cases and so on. All of the same types of artifact that we might find in an engineering project. The work items in that project are things like stories and defects and so on. So let's drag the story container onto the view. Now, at this point, we could filter the artifacts that we want to show, but I'll just click OK and we'll get all of them. Now, let's add some traceability, starting with requirements. I can ask ENI to show links to. We'll have a new container created on the view. Now we could filter by project, but we don't need to. And here, let's select the type of artifact we're interested in, requirements. On the right, we can see the different types of traceability link that exist between, in this case, stories and requirements. Let's choose implements requirement. Now note at the bottom here, we know how many of those link types are present. If we click finish, then the requirements and the traceability links appear. Let's do that again, this time from the container that contains our linked requirements. And this time we'll choose test cases and we'll select the validated by link type. All right, one more time. This time we'll go from the test cases to the reported by test results. Now we could of course apply coloring and line styles and formatting and so on to make this view a little bit prettier, a little bit more consumable. But instead, I want to show you another very powerful capability. If I save and close this view, so we're done editing it, and we're now basically consuming it. I can select any artifact or group of artifacts in the view, and you'll see straight away that the other artifacts up and downstream from this one get highlighted. But up here in the menu, I can apply dependability analysis, which will filter the view. And that allows us to focus on the impact of something changing. For example, what happens if this test case changes? By applying a filter, I can see all of the artifacts up and downstream from this one that will be impacted. And views like these can then be saved as snapshots of the traceability at that time. Now let's look at two other capabilities inside ENI, starting with searching. If you've used the ELM platform at all, then you will have seen this search bar at the top of the page. In any of the domain tools, like requirements management, for example, this allows you to search that project in that domain. Here in ENI, however, it allows you to search all domains and all projects, anything that's in that LQE index. For example, if I type surveillance and hit enter, I'll get all of the results from the index where that word exists somewhere in the properties of an artifact. It doesn't have to be the name. Over on the left, we can filter by type to narrow our search. And we can also filter the results by text as well. All of these results are live. For example, Rich Hover shows me that this result is a solution epic in the workflow management part of the platform. I can, of course, use this to navigate directly to an artifact. So it's a great jumping off point. Let's instead look at another very powerful capability impact analysis. The views that we saw earlier are very powerful, very dynamic, and they're also custom built to suit a specific purpose. Impact analysis diagrams, however, are auto generated. So they're great for exploring the engineering data. Let's create one by clicking start analysis on one of the requirements in this result set. By default, the view shows us one level of traceability downstream from our selected artifact. For example, here we can see that this requirement is in the aviary requirements project area inside a component called aviary RM. We can dynamically adjust the diagram 
removing artifacts or even entire types as we go. For example, I can remove this resource shape type from the view and it adjusts itself. Now we can change the traceability here. Let's change this to up and downstream, one level in each direction. Now we can see other requirements that satisfy this one, the module in which the requirement appears and the change request that affects it. We can apply many popular layout styles. And of course, all of the data presented here is live. So we can select any of these engineering artifacts and we can get that rich hover to see more detail. And of course, we can navigate into the original tool from here as well. One final example. If you recall way back at the start of this session, we saw that the lifecycle query index, LQE, was collecting change management data from JIRA. In this sample project, stories and bugs in JIRA have been traced to requirements indoors next using standard OSLC links. Here on this dashboard, we can visualize that traceability. This table is a table of bugs in JIRA color coded by their priority and also shows the requirements to which they've been traced indoors next. And we can navigate from that table to either the JIRA bug or the linked requirement. Here, I'll navigate to the JIRA bug. There we can see the effects requirement OSRC link that was being visualized in the table. Back on the dashboard, the view on the right is showing user stories from JIRA again, color coded by their priority, along with the requirements that implement them. And I can use that view for navigation as well. Well, that's it for this demonstration. Hopefully you've seen how the Jazz platform implements OSLC linking and how LQE and Engineering Insights use TRS, helping you to visualize, analyze, and simply gain more benefit from your connected engineering data.